I'm going to start with a bold prediction that we are betting on. B2B cloud software will be dead by 2030. It kind of feels weird we say that because that's the business we are in. And then the answer first is the next generation of enterprise software will be autonomous software. So the best way to think about future is always look at history. And history gives you a lot of clues of what's to come. So I'm going to rewind a bit to talk about the evolution of software. So if you go to the 1950s, we think of this as the age of paper, typewriters, and filing cabinets, right? This is probably how many of our parents and grandparents did business. You print a purchase order, print a sales order, and then you stack it in a file cabinet as a record. And then the next stage of that was the 1980s, which was the IBM mainframes. Many of your companies probably built software, paid for it. It was the green screen terminals. It's the same stuff. Whatever was paper became digital. And then the 2000s is where I started my career as an SAP developer, is the age of SAP on-prem. The biggest value proposition was instead of each of you needing to build your own software and incur millions of dollars of cost, you could just go license a package software and then use it versus building. And then 2010s actually belong to Salesforce. We all know that the whole cloud revolution over the last decade is the age of cloud software. The value proposition was, instead of you buying servers, hardware, operating system, and army of people to maintain and manage, all of that is hosted on the cloud and you get the software delivered over the cloud. But let's take a simple example of a purchase order, a business transaction that you create with a vendor. If you look at the evolution, we went from paper to mainframe to SAP on-prem, and let's say somebody like a Ariba or a Coupa or others, at a macro level, it is still the same information. We went from huge shift from going from paper and filing cabinets to electronic systems of record, but the core business process of is still create, read, update, delete of information records. When I started my career at SAP, I was kind of surprised that every transaction was VA01, create sales order, VA02, change sales order, VA03, display sales order. And almost every business transaction was like that. It's still a massive shift because we went from paper to information, digital information records, but it is still the same create, read, update, delete software. Now, let's kind of summarize, right? We went from paper, mainframes, on-prem cloud. And you'll also notice that the disruption cycles are shrinking. What took 30 years went to 20 years and 10 years. So you can easily now extrapolate and say, Maybe the next disruption cycle is seven years because of the shrinking. But what next? What is the next after cloud software? I'm going to shift gears to a parallel technology economy that we are all part of. Maybe that will give us some clues. So the world of B2C applications, all those apps that you download and use from iPhone. So these are the top B2C applications, <clears throat> Facebook, Google Maps, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Amazon, Netflix, and Uber. These are all part of our everyday lives. They were not part of our everyday lives and even a decade ago. We take it for granted today. Let's take a simple application like a Google Maps, which probably many of you used coming into the conference this morning. But if you think about what is happening under the hood, it is a data-driven, intelligent navigation system. It is taking into account the time of the day, the real-time traffic data, the history of what happened at that time in that location, and then it's dynamically giving you route options to minimize your time to get to a location. But as a user, you don't know all that stuff, but it's basically a data-driven intelligent navigation. So what is the common theme here? If you look at the, the lowest column here, this is data-driven intelligent B2C applications for specific consumer needs. Facebook personal data, Google traffic data, LinkedIn professional data, and so forth. But if you now look at the explosion of all the B2C applications, they all go deep on one specific consumer need. It is really related to a set of data specific to that consumer need and the democratic power of that millions or billions of records and how does it bring it together to make your experience easy. Now, switching back to B2B software applications. Whether you are a user in some remote part of the world, literally in a village, let's say, to sitting in the corporate office in New York, what you see on the left 
is the end user experience that they're going through today. They all have mobile phones, smartphones. They're all using these applications on a daily basis. But when you go to work, you're still doing the create, read, update, delete in a gray screen in SAP. So this is two parallel economies, exact same users. The users are ready. It may be, there could be some change management issues, but then does that make sense? And that is why we think in less than seven years or probably seven years, every B2B software category, be it order to cash, procure to pay, e-commerce will be disrupted by data-driven intelligent applications. We are calling them autonomous software. Maybe somebody else would give it another name. So what is the bet that Hyridis is making? We are going, we are investing heavily on building domain-specific autonomous software, and we're calling it autonomous finance. That's the category we are slowly shifting to, where the autonomous finance is the data-driven finance applications. Of course, we have made a lot of progress in autonomous receivables for order to cash. We have over 700 customers. We launched autonomous treasury two and a half years back. We have about 50 clients, and autonomous accounting is one of my new favorites, uh, which we launched last year. So what are the building blocks of an autonomous finance application? The core foundation is the domain-specific big data. If you think about the inspiration from B2C, the layer after that is the intelligence layer. How do you work on the data through a massive set of data with a set of algorithms and then deliver a unique experience to users, which I think it's a long way to go. In, right? Most of us as B2B software companies, we have long ways to go when it comes to delivering an experience and we're working on it. So, to summarize, we have today about 13 plus AI use cases for order to cash. You don't have to understand the details, but if you're interested, you can. But from credit to collections, and we are continuing to invest more and more. This is fairly complex and advanced uh, R&D stuff that we are doing. All right, with that, closing, we think B2B SaaS will be dead. Autonomous finance is the next generation of software, but you will keep us honest based on speed to value. Thank you.